Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to show you how to take the derivative of the secant of x and the cosecant of x. So before we do that we're going to rewrite them into their standard form. The cosecant of x is equal to 1 over the uh, cosine of x. <clears throat> so we can write this as uh, the d dx of 1 over the cosine of x. All right, and then we're going to use the quotient rule. So this then is equal to the denominator, cosine of x, times the derivative of the numerator, and of course the derivative of 1 is 0, minus the numerator, 1, times the derivative of the denominator, and the, the denominator uh, is cosine of x, when we take derivatives of minus the sine of x, and the whole thing divided by the denominator squared, which is a cosine squared of x. Since this is equal to 0, we can say this is equal to minus times the minus is a plus, or the sine of x divided by the cosine squared of x. Now, we can leave it like that, but that's not the, the general form for the answer for the derivative secant of x. We can then look at this and say, well, 1 over the cosine of x, that's equal to the secant of x, and 1 over the cosine squared of x is equal to the secant squared of x, so this can be written as the sine of x, well, maybe I'll do it over here. We could write sine of x times the uh, secant squared of x. Or, there's another way we can write this, we can say, uh, we can write this as the sine of x over the cosine of x times the cosine of x, and look at this and say, well, that's equal to the tangent of x. So this can be written as the tangent of x, and 1 over the cosine of x is equal to the secant of x, so that can be also written times the secant of x. And this tends to be the more standard form of the answer. So this could have been correct, that's correct, but essentially this is the standard answer you'll find in most books. So we can then say that the ddx of the secant of x is equal to the tangent of x times the secant of x. All right, let's see if we can do the same thing to, to the cosecant of x. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the ddx of the cosecant of x is the same as saying the ddx or the derivative with respect to x of 1 over the sine of x. Now we use the quotient rule. So we can say the derivative of 1 over sine of x can be written as the denominator, which is the sine of x times the derivative of the numerator, but the derivative of 1 is 0, minus the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of sine of x is equal to the cosine of x, and the whole thing divided by the sine squared of x. All right, then we can see here that this goes to 0, so we're left with minus the cosine of x over the sine squared of x. And again, that is the correct answer, that is the derivative of the cosecant of x, but that's not the general form that they like to have it in. So we can see here that's the general form of the answer, so how do we make this look like that? Uh, we can then write this as minus the cosine of x over the sine of x times the sine of x. And if you look at the cosine over the sine, that's equal to the cotangent, so this can be written as minus, don't forget the minus sign, cotangent of x, times 1 over the sine of x, and 1 over the sine of x is equal to the cosecant of x, so we can write this as the cotangent of x times the cosecant of x, and that would then be the answer or the derivative, the ddx of the cosecant of x. There you go, and we have the same answer, except you know, we have these in reverse, but that doesn't matter. Same thing, and that's how you take the derivative of the secant of x and the cosecant vex. And now we're ready to put it all together and show you some examples where trigonometric functions are put into some various combinations and sh I'll show you how to take the derivative of those. All right.